Oh, well, Happy New Year everyone. I will admit it's not been the best of starts for me, as you'll have seen on my streams. And as you'll have probably also seen on my streams, I have been talking about this topic quite a lot. This video was long overdue and I would say I'm sorry, but I'm not. So let's get into it. No one is safe until everyone is safe. That is the motto of the COVAX organisation. The focus of the organisation is to vaccinate as much of the world as possible, with a focus on vulnerable people and healthcare workers. But despite being formed before COVID vaccines even existed, the COVAX initiative is sort of failing. In the developed world, we're doing quite well in terms of vaccination. As of the week commencing 1st of November, between 83.5% and 89.8% of adults in the UK were either double vaxxed or double vaxxed with a booster. Across the pond in the US, nearly 60% of adults were double vaxxed. Those figures, especially in the UK, are excellent, especially considering the growing prevalence of the anti-vax movement and the hesitancy some have regarding the COVID vaccine, which was created faster than any other vaccine in human history. All things considered, I do understand the hesitancy to an extent. New side effects seem to be popping up all the time, and of course we have no long-term data yet. But in this new world of restrictions and vaccine mandates, it seems that being vaccinated is better in more ways than just avoiding a severe COVID infection. In contrast to the high and steadily growing rates of vaccination in the developed world, the developing world is not doing nearly as well. An article released by the news outlet Quartz Africa revealed that only 7.5% of the entire African continent is double vaccinated. Even more worryingly, over 80% of the population are not even partially vaccinated. How did this happen? How, when people here in the UK are receiving their third doses, is so much of an entire continent not even partially vaccinated? The simple answer here is greed. Before a safe vaccine had even been developed, the UK had already ordered enough doses to more than vaccinate our entire population. This should not have been allowed to happen in my opinion, but as with everything in today's society, money talks. Pharmaceutical companies have always been questioned about the motives behind what they do. Do they really care about global health? or is profit the main motivator? Now, I'm not much of a conspiracy theorist, but it is no secret that the pharmaceutical industry absolutely rakes in the cash. Pfizer, the creators of the vaccine that I myself received, had a turnover of over three and a half billion dollars in the first three months of 2021, with the overwhelming majority of this money coming from their COVID vaccine. This is an unfathomable amount of money to me, and I think that it is simply undeniable that this much money is definitely a motivator when it comes to developing medicine. Health is something that we'll never have full control over, and as someone who is physically and mentally chronically ill, I am acutely aware of this. Humans will always need medicine. The World Health Organization reported that as of April this year, the wealthiest countries had already secured 87% of their available vaccine doses whilst developing countries had only 0.2%. This difference is absolutely abysmal. As I mentioned earlier, the COVAX program had existed way before this, but they were unable to prevent this bias in vaccine distribution. The managing director of COVAX, Aurelia Nguyen, believes that the pharmaceutical companies deliberately prioritised wealthier countries. And if I'm being honest, I think I agree. Another factor which contributed to these low vaccination rates was the delay in vaccine rollout. The UK started vaccinating our vulnerable population in December 2020, whereas the COVAX initiative did not begin their vaccine rollout until the end of February 2021. However, this is the most insignificant of contributing factors because Japan also began their vaccine rollout in February, and they've now fully vaccinated over two thirds of their population. The middleman between developing countries and the pharmaceutical companies was, of course, COVAX. The main problem here is thus simple. The COVAX organisation itself 
simply could not acquire the number of vaccines that were required. And we are already seeing the run-on effect of this with something you guys might have heard of. Omicron. I have definitely been speaking about this variant on stream a lot more than I ever would in a video because there's still not that much data on it and it's something that, you know, it's not really worth making a whole video about. The point here is that without a high level of vaccination worldwide, COVID is just going to keep mutating over and over. The vicious circle of new variants, it's never going to end. And worst case scenario, it's going to become something that our vaccines can't even deal with anymore. As it stands at the moment, the vaccines are pretty effective. It is reported regularly that most patients in the ICU currently with COVID are unvaccinated with the medical journal The Lancet reporting that full vaccination provides 90% protection against COVID-related hospital admissions and 70% protection against infection with the virus. In short, the vaccine works, but it will not work nearly as well as we need it to unless this disbalance in vaccine distribution is solved. One of the ways that COVAX was supposed to receive their vaccine doses was through developed countries pledging or promising to donate them. However, as written in a report very aptly named Dose of Reality by the People's Vaccine Alliance, only 14% seriously of the pledged vaccine doses had made it to their destinations by the end of October. The ins and outs of how exactly COVAX works seem to be a little bit complex and I couldn't find any clear-cut answers as to why exactly the doses are not getting to their destinations. However, I'm willing to bet that one reason is certain countries are hoarding doses in order to give out more booster shots. Boris Johnson recently addressed the UK, urging everyone to get the booster in order to prevent the Omicron variant from overwhelming the NHS this winter. Not to be a pessimist, but even if everyone goes out to get a booster shot tomorrow, it's going to be in vain because the NHS is going to get overwhelmed anyway, as they do every winter and throughout the rest of the year, if I'm being honest. If only our government could find it in their hearts to sacrifice some of their much needed ludicrous bonuses to better fund our NHS. Anyway, I am in no way against booster vaccines, which by the way are the exact same formula that most of us in the developed world have already had twice. There is no difference in the formula, which is a common misconception. The only issue that I have is that so much of the developing world have not even received one vaccine. And this simply won't do in the fight against COVID. We will never get ahead of the mutations in the virus until we start working together. There is no rich or poor in death from illness.